Glasgow's case, it's all bluster. I think it relates more to am its ambitions to bolster its stock price or get bought out more than uh, it, any real belief that it's been um, wronged by IBM. But I think that it is a wake-up call for us, and it's the kind of thing that could have happened before. We're lucky that it hasn't. Um, to some extent, the damage has already been done. I mean, it's like the, with the internet, how it used to be all friendly and, and everyone, everything was open and, you know, there was no problems with spam and, and, and you know, too much... Um, malicious hacking and that sort of thing. So, you know, it's no longer such a friendly place, the open source world. Um, we are going to have to start getting serious and um, uh, look to, as far as copyright goes, we've got to look to our developers to, to guarantee the cleanliness of their code, um, make sure that we don't accidentally taint it by making it a derivative work. As far as trade secrets go, we've got to get clearance from developers and their employers to make sure that if there is any confidential information, they're not prohibited from joining our open source project. Um, as far as patents go, we've got to know the technologies that are out there and either work around them or see if we can obtain a royalty-free licence for them. So if we have the discipline to think about these issues, uh, we're not only protecting ourselves from liability, we're also protecting our contributors and our users, more importantly. And um, although SCO has already shaken the, the confidence of some people out there, governments and enterprise you know, have been shaken by this, if we can go back and show them that we're thinking about these issues and that we've improved our processes and procedures, then I think um, that is going to help the open source development model to survive and, and thrive in the post-SCO world. Um, so, did we have a question? Yes? Yeah, from, from what I've heard, the most um, significant impact of that will be more on copyright law um, than on patent law, but um, it's not a... It's going to be difficult for us to resist you know, caving into whatever the US asks for, um, but uh, there's a lot of um, antagonism out there in the community to uh, dumbing down our system. The US DMCA, um, which is their digital millennia... Uh, Copyright Act um, has got a lot more trouble in it for people like ISPs who are at the moment pretty well protected from copyright infringements on their networks as long as they weren't really responsible for them and they're going to be uh, in a lot more danger if we turn our legislation into a carbon copy of what the USA has. So um, I think... I haven't really thought through the implications as far as co uh, software copyright goes but um, so I'd probably have to give that some more thought but... Um, overall, I'm just hopeful that we're not going to wholesale adopt the US approach because what we've got is actually better than what they've got, I think. Yes. Yeah, I think that's more likely to be called a derivative work. In a way, it's a funny place to draw the dividing line because it doesn't really matter, in a sense, um, whether it's statically or dynamically linked. But what I'm trying to mean by that is that um, if you can show this is something that is quite independent, we can plug it in, we can plug it out, it's only got a few sort of um, you know, calls that it uses to interface with the with the other program, that's less likely to be derivative. Um, but the more entangled it is with the, the software, the um, you know, more system calls that it uses within the other program, um, that's going to be more likely to be derivative. So, yes? Yeah, I think there is an argument, to be honest, that they can say this was not uh, released with our authority and so it wasn't an intentional act. I think, you know, much as I am inclined to mock Scott, I think that there is an argument there and it may not succeed, but, I, yeah, it's definitely an argument. Yeah, that, that, that's true as well. Um, the only thing is that it's hard to practically put the genie back in the bottle um, and so um, there's uh, um, also the fact that they would have to, if people were keeping on using it, there would be an argument both ways uh, as to whether they're 
you know, whether this license. Yes, yeah, Sky would have to just inform them that it was revoked in individually, possibly. You know, that's the kind. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the kind of argument you'd make. You'd say, well, okay, you've revoked it to these people over here, but I haven't been reading the newspaper and I haven't been uh, reading your website, so I don't know that it's been revoked, so I'm allowed to keep on using it. Um, I think, have we got time for one more question? Yes? Yep. Mm. Yeah, when it's the same actual programmer who's working on two projects, that's the most dangerous situation you can be in. It's better, it's easier for a company that has got different developers working on the different projects, but when it's the same developer, um, the best thing to do is to try and get the approval of the person you're working for before to say, can I work on this project? And if you don't, there's always going to be a risk there. Because, I mean, you can say, I deliberately blocked this out of my mind, but how are you going to prove it? So, um, Okay, if anyone else has questions, I'm free. I'm here for the rest of the conference. I've got some business cards here if you want to grab them and you can email me as well. So, um, thank you people.